Okay. Yay. Hi. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Cherry. How are you? I think yours, Michelle, there you go. Oh, there I go. How are yeah. you? Good, how are you? Hanging in there, a little crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I know that feeling. <laughs> You've got little people at home to teach. I just, just me and my husband, so we're good. <laughs> Except that my, my younger people, I, mm, one is sleeping, one is Teenager. social media-ing, if that's a verb, and one is I think, doing Xbox with camp friends. Well, there you go. There so you go. keeps them busy. It's good. <laughs> I'm afraid that we're not going to be going back to school, at least in my my situation. You know, school for That's... me ends May 30th and graduation is supposed to be the 31st. Yeah. So my heart kind of breaks for my seniors. Mm. Yeah. I know for seniors everywhere, they're right. missing out on a lot of stuff. I know. I know. And hopefully we'll come out better on the other end of all of this. I hope so. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> all right. I'm going to just grab an egg because I realized I didn't take that out. Hold on one sec. Hi, Michelle. I'm Jerry. How are you? I'm good, Jerry. How are you? Good. I've actually already made my holiday dough, but I'm not really sure it's going to work because I don't think I put enough flour in it. So I added it at the end. So we'll see. No, I'm just an observer, but good for you. You found yeast. It's a. Oh, yeah. I had it. I've, and I, <laughs> I've done this with um, Rabbi before. I did it in her house. It's really a fun class. Oh, good. Well, I, mean, I think I missed the one time that she did it a long time ago. And. Uh... And trying to find yeast is truly a challenge. <laughs> yeah, that's what I hear. Yeah, I do have a couple. Uh, I do have a couple uh, packets left, so I guess I'll hold on to them. I would. You can't even yeah. get a King Arthur flour. Yeah, well, I just use whatever flour I can get, so I'm not yeah. that picky. <laughs> that you can't get either. <laughs> yeah, over over Easter, somebody actually posted something and said. Um, where can I get flour? And I said, you know, I have a whole five pound. I don't need it. It's Passover. And then, and then she ended up finding it. You know, people were posting all over. You can get it in Madison. Stop and Shop has it. So who knew? <laughs> I had a problem getting sugar for a while, so I bought right. a different kind of sugar. I haven't opened it yet, though. Yeah. Everybody's home baking. Well, it's kind of crazy. I mean, I went to Shoprite the other day and they were literally out of orange juice oh so my god I, wow. yeah and they were out of ketchup so i ended up getting i because I, I didn't want a gigunda one so i bought <laughs> a different brand of ketchup so um rabbi what you miss is i did make my dough but i have a feeling it may not work okay but we'll try i mean what's the worst that'll happen it'll be a little dense <laughs> i'm sure we'll be fine right Wow. I actually, I did look up the difference between um, regular flour and bread flour because I was having a very hard time finding bread flour, which I found yesterday at King's in Mendham, which I think it's just a less frequented store. So it seems to always have almost everything in it. Um, and um, there's more gluten in bread flour. That's the big difference. So I don't know how it cooks differently, but um, but we find out today. Um, so, but 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 it is not Jerry. Did you use regular flour? Yeah, I always use regular flour. But what happened is I took your recipe and I divided it in half. Yeah, and I didn't realize it. It was a little a little too wet. So yeah, I just wanted some more flour. It's rising right now. So we'll see what happens in about 20 That minutes. should be fine. Okay. It, yeah, it should be fine. It's a very forgiving recipe. So um, if it's too wet, you add flour. If it's too dry, you add water. Right. Okay. Yep. Okay. So, so the recipe 
is on the Macom NJ website. Okay. And um, you can find it there. And um, there Hi, Michelle, go. Jerry, how are you? I'm good. Is on the Macom NJ website. Oops. Okay. <laughs> Echo. And I'm on here in twice. twice. How do I mute this one? <laughs> okay. Yeah, because I find because I was looking at the comments on Facebook. Uh, that doesn't help at all. That's all right. I'm a novice. I'm gonna shut this off because that's that will make me crazy. <laughs> Um, and if people are joining us in Facebook land, hello, I don't see your, um, your messages because, uh, I, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> and it's a better picture coming through zoom than through Facebook live. So, um, yeah, anyway, so we'll get started. So, uh, what we're going to do today is if you want to just make a traditional challah, you can make a traditional challah. Um, but one of the things we're going to do today is learn how to make a stuffed challah. So you can put a yummy filling into your challah. Um, so I've done that now twice. Last week we did one with cinnamon and sugar and butter, and that turned out really delicious. And the first time I did it, I used cookie butter. Um, I'm going to show you what cookie butter is. It's lotus cookies, Bishkoff Bishka lotus cookies. Um, you can find it at Trader Joe's. You can, I think I got this at ShopRite actually. Um, and what I learned the first time I used the cookie butter, which is very delicious cookie butter, um, was that I didn't use enough. I thought I was really globbing it on there. Um, <laughs> but when we ate it, we really couldn't taste the cookie butter in it at all. Um, I'd also put some chocolate chips in it. We could taste the chocolate, but we couldn't taste the cookie butter. But that was okay because we just took the cookie butter and spread it on the challah, and then it was really uh, delicious. So um, what I learned is if you're going to use the cookie butter, you really need to use a lot, probably close to a cup, and I probably used only about half of that. So uh, that's cookie butter. So I put up on the website um, some different ways uh, to stuff your challah. So I tend to be a sweet person, which is why I go with the cinnamon and sugar um, or the cookie butter. I had the chocolate chips in it. I didn't love the chocolate in it, but other people certainly love to put chocolate in it. Um, but other things that you could do uh, that sounded really delicious, feta and pesto or goat cheese and pesto. Um, you could do, um, feta and goat cheese and um, spinach, you could do that also. Pesto and sun-dried tomatoes, you could do it with halava, which sounded really yummy. We can't do it in our house because we have a sesame allergy, but um, if my grandfather was still alive, he'd be diving headfirst into that one because that was his favorite. Um, you could use garlic, you could do onion, there was one recipe with cranberry sauce that I thought looked really yummy. You could do um, apples and cinnamon or any kind of cookie butter, nut, any kind of nut butter, peanut butter. Um, so lots of really great and delicious options to fill your challah. And it just depends if you want to go sweet or savory. And I know some people who do two challahs, one traditional challah and then one that they um, use for dessert. So they make them both at the same time, but then they have a dessert challah as well by using the sweet one, or they use it as an appetizer with the savory and then have a regular challah for, for their table for Shabbat. Okay, so we're going to get our ingredients ready. And I did make, I'm only going to do half the recipe because I made one already so we could braid it. Um, and if I did a whole double loaf of challah, that would be way too much challah in our house. Uh, so I'm gonna use half the recipe. If you don't have a lot of flour and you only wanna use half the recipe, that's okay too. So we start with one cup of warm water so we can get our yeast going. So I'm just gonna get the water because I like it to be warm. Let me start. Mm 
and give it another second to get a little hotter. That'll be fine. Okay, so we have our cup of warm water, and I'm just going to um, put the yeast right inside. And um, I'm lazy with the dishes, so I try to use as few as possible. So. I only need one cup of water, but I'm using the two cup measuring cup so that I can put the oil right into the, into the water and then I put the egg right in there also. And I like to just give that yeast a little mix so it drops down. Okay, and then we set that aside so that it can just do its thing while we get the rest of the ingredients ready. So now we're going to need our, our flour, and this needs three and three quarters cups of flour. And I said that the recipe is pretty forgiving. What I find is I must over flour every time because I almost always need to add a little bit of water. Um, so normally when I bake, I really like to like scrape with the knife and make it so super exacting. Um, but with this, I don't. And I'm going to go a little bit under the cup, like just a tiny bit, um, because I know that I usually end up needing to add water. So I'll go with a little less and see if I need to add a little bit less water. So one, two, that's three. And this measuring cup actually has a line in it where if you fill it to the line, that's three quarters of a cup. So see if I can manage that. A little bit more. Okay, so that's three and three quarters cup. I keep the flour close by um, because like Jerry said, it was too wet. If it's too wet, I'll just add a little more flour and it's no big deal. So I keep it close for that. Then we need our sugar. So we're gonna put in half a cup of sugar. And we need our salt. So this needs uh, one and a half teaspoons of salt. And uh, a friend of mine says, the only way you can mess up challah is to forget the salt. As long as you put the salt in, it's good. If you forget the salt, it won't taste good. So that's a good tip. And she's like a super cook, so super Jewish cook, actually. One, two, three. And then we just need um, one teaspoon of baking powder. Put that in there. Okay. All right, so that's all of our dry stuff. It's out of the way. Good. And then I like to give it the dry stuff a little bit of a mix um, just to help it get itself together so that when the wet stuff goes in it comes together a little bit otherwise sometimes I find if I put the sugar in first I find that the sugar sort of settles at the bottom so let's give that a mix okay now I'm going to add my measuring cup because I'm lazy with dishes I'm just going to put in a quarter of a cup of oil and this is vegetable oil. So I'm gonna just pour that right in. And at the same time, I'm gonna oil my bowl because it's good to have a little bit of an oiled bowl for when you put the dough in um, once it comes together. So that just needs a little bit. And then I'm just gonna grab a paper towel and rub that around. So that when I put the dough in, it will be uh, well oiled. Okay, I'm gonna set that aside. 
And now we have our egg. For this, it's just the one egg. And I'm gonna put that in. Okay. And it does seem that um, the egg, you can beat it really nicely and it seems to break up very quickly um, in the oil and the yeast. So I'm just gonna give that a quick mix around, make sure that the yolk is all broken up. And then I'm going to pour it right into my flour mixture. Everything comes out. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, and then I'm just going to mix it to start to incorporate everything so that it's, uh, I'll be able to pick up the dough once it starts to come together to knead it. So, because at first it's very, very wet. Rabbi, have you ever used the dough hook on a KitchenAid to do that? So, that's an Excellent question. So you could use the dough hook on the KitchenAid. Um, I do have one, but I, I don't use it, partly because I find that there's something very um, comforting in actually right. kneading the dough. Right. And you only have to knead it for five minutes, and I start that five-minute timer basically when I start to mix it in the bowl. Um, so once I pour this out, I'll go with uh, like a four-minute timer to just get it all together. All right, so that's coming together nicely. If you get a different texture by doing it by hand than with the hook. You may. Um, I don't know, I just, I like, I like Light. pushing the dough. <laughs> so I, I have cousins that um, they use their bread machine all the time and um, they could not imagine why I would want to work the dough with my hands when I could just throw it in the bread machine and then take it out once everything was all incorporated together. Um, but I convinced them to do it once by hand and then they were like, oh, that is kind of nice actually. I like playing um, in the garden. <laughs> you know, I use a dough hook, I've done it both ways. Okay, good to know. Yeah. Does it taste the same both ways? Um, well, I'll let you know after, I'll, I'll, I'll have to like, let you guys know after this one, but I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's always a good recipe. So I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see how it is stuck. So I'm, I'm excited about that. It's good. <laughs> okay. So I'm just getting all the flour out. I'm sure I'm going to have to add a little bit more water here. Um, as I start to incorporate this, I can see that the, let's see. So I have a lot of sort of floury stuff that's along the bottom that's sort of not in. Um, and the dough is kind of like grainy uh, and kind of pulling, it's easily pulled apart and kind of grainy. And so we don't, it actually looks like halava. <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more water to it so that it's a little bit less grainy. And then I'm going to set my timer. Alexa, set a timer. Alexa, set a timer. <laughs> For how long? Four minutes. Four minutes. Ah. Starting now. Alexa and I have not been good friends lately. She doesn't listen to me at all. Hmm. I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Alexa. And when I talk to her here in the kitchen, she never seems to hear me. But if I say that word and I'm in my family room, which is not that close to this space, uh, then she hears me. I'm like, why? Why can't she hear me when I'm next to her? <laughs> work, technology. <laughs> yes. Okay, so now I'm, I'm just kneading it around, kind of mush it with my knuckles and a little with the heels of my hand. Mushing it around. So my cousins who like to use the bread maker, um, last week he called me and he said, uh, actually he texted me. He's like, I want to make a gluten-free challah. How do I do that? And I was like, I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know how to make a gluten-free challah. And the last one I made 
was horrible. I mean, it was really horrible. So it was my first try and uh, it was just, it was bad. Um, because I probably needed to use xanthan gum to help the dough to stay together because otherwise it's very, um, it's a very wet dough and you cannot grate it. That's the hard part about um, gluten-free is it's very hard to braid because there's something about the yeast meeting the gluten to hold everything together. So, so I actually, of, what was that? What kind of flour did he use? Rice flour? So I have, I had a bunch of different flours. I use like cannabis, cannava flour was what I ended up using, but I called King Arthur's um, because they're the flour people to find out what I should do. And you can actually buy a silicon challah mold hmm. online at Amazon, who knew? And so you can take your very wet challah and just pour it into the mold. And then when you cook it, it comes out looking like a challah. Wow. So I was like, ah, oh, that's good to know. Who knew? So but <laughs> when my cousin called, texted me, he says, okay, how do I, how do, I do this? So I had called King Arthur's and they made some recommendations. And so I said, okay, here's what they suggested. And I found a couple of recipes that might work. And he was like, oh, well, uh, I was kind of hoping to use what's in the pantry because, you know, we're like shelter in place here. <laughs> and I, I just started laughing. I'm like, okay, uh, well, good luck. Um, so he and his wife improvised a bit. And they made a challah that they said came out pretty good without using the silicon mold because they didn't have one and just using the gluten-free things that they had in their house. So he sent me the recipe. I might give it a shot, see how it goes. Um, but he's very crafty. And <laughs> so I'm sure they came up with something that was good. And he said it tasted good and he was pleased with it, so that was good. All right, we're probably getting close to the four minute mark. Let's see. Alexa, how much time is left on the timer? You have 10 seconds left on your four minute timer. Okay, so with 10 seconds to go, I'm calling it good enough. <laughs> and I'm gonna, and so Alexa, shut off. So you can see that the dough is not it's not a real sticky dough. It could be a little bit stickier than this and have some residue left on my hands, some dough that sticks. Um, but if it doesn't, that's okay. But you don't want it to be too wet because if it's too sticky, it'll be very hard to braid. I'm just gonna roll it here in the oil. I'm gonna cover it with a piece of parchment. Oh, hold on. That one person. Okay. So I'm gonna cover it with a parchment, and I'm gonna cover it with a towel. I'm gonna set it aside for an hour, and voila! Just like at the TV Food Network, <laughs> uh, here we have one ready to go. And um. I did not bake one. Let me just shut that off. Oh, oops. Okay. Um, oh my goodness. Okay. Hopefully that's gonna stop in a second. Let's see. Hmm. There we go. Okay, so I think last time I baked one, like I had one ready to go in the oven but I didn't do that for this time. So we won't get to see the actual finished product. Um, so we'll have to use our imaginations. Although the challah that I have on the web, on the Facebook page, I think the, that picture is the stuffed challah. So you'll be able to see what it looks like. And if anybody's a New Jersey person and has eaten that mess stories, um, the challah that I made last week, not two weeks ago, um, tasted like the cinnamon bread from Mass Stories, which was 
super delicious. Okay, so I'm just gonna mush the second, uh, once the challah has risen, you wanna just knead it a little bit more. So I'm just gonna, it doesn't need a lot of kneading. It doesn't need a full five minutes, just needs a couple of minutes to sort of break it apart and pull it apart and get it to be doughy again. Okay, so just mushing that around. And like I said, I do find that the, just putting my hands in the dough is, it's relaxing and um, I can work out my tension, take it out on the dough if I'm feeling angry or very lovingly mush it. Um, depends on, on the mood. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this dough and I'm gonna divide it into four pieces um, because I'm gonna do a four braid challah. So I'm gonna just cut everything in half and cut it in half again so that the pieces are all about the same size. And I, use, I have a dough scraper thing, um, but you can use a knife or whatever. It doesn't, you don't have to use that. Okay, and then I'm going to create my, my strands. And I'm actually gonna leave them, usually mine are, I make them pretty long. Um, but I'm gonna leave them a little bit shorter to, to stuff them. Okay, and I do all four strands and then I'll come back and stuff one at a time after. One. And I never actually measured how long, but it's probably somewhere between, between 10 and 12 inches for each strand. And I just, uh, I'm just putting them here on a tray with parchment paper. Um, I love parchment because nothing sticks to it. Makes for a very easy cleanup. And I like to have a big working space to roll out the dough. So I always feel like I have to move it somewhere else to have enough space. Okay, so here's the last one. And the stuffed challah that I'm gonna do today is cinnamon roll, because my family really liked that last week, or two weeks ago. Last week was Passover, so there was nothing. Um, okay, so for the cinnamon roll, it's going to require uh, a third of a cup of canola oil, three quarters of a cup of brown sugar, and a teaspoon of cinnamon. So, just gonna get out a little bowl so I can do that. So, a third of a cup of canola. Actually, it really calls for canola, but I don't have canola. So I'm using vegetable. So they can be used interchangeably. You could use olive oil, which sounded weird with cinnamon. Um, you could also use avocado oil. It seemed pretty flexible on the oil. So, and actually I do use canola oil when I bake for Passover. And I had a thing this size, and I guess I used the whole thing, which, Seems like a lot of canola. Okay, so that's the canola. We need three quarters of a cup of brown sugar. Now this is soft. I've been keeping it in the freezer when I use it. So um, let's see. I'm actually gonna, just to make my life easier, I do have a three quarter cup cup, but most people don't. So I'm just going to do a quarter of a cup three times. Oop. 
bag is breaking out the back. Two. And three. Good. And put in a little bit just in case I never that well. And then I just need my cinnamon. And half a teaspoon of cinnamon. Throw that in, half a teaspoon. A little over, it's probably fine. Okay, and then I'm going to mix that all together. And then I'm going to fill it into the so this makes like a paste okay. so it kind of holds together and I'm actually only going to stuff um, three of the four pieces of dough last time I did it that way and it just seemed to distribute the, um, the filling really nicely throughout the kala, so it wasn't too overpowering. Okay, so I'm gonna take one of my rolls of kala, and I'm just gonna spread it out so that it can hold the filling. Mm, hold on, I'm gonna just aim my camera. Uh, yay. <laughs> there we go. There we go, we can see it. So I just spread it out. Um, let me just move that. Okay, so it's just like that. Oops, like that. And then I'm gonna put in about a third of the filling. Which I'm just gonna use my hands to sort of push that across. to make a line of the filling. All the way to the end. Make sure it's kind of evenly spread there. I think I used about a third. And then I'm just gonna pinch it. So I'm gonna sort of roll the top over and roll the bottom up so that all of the filling is sealed inside the strand. Okay. And then I pinch the ends and then I give it a little bit of a roll just to keep it together and make sure it's staying together. Okay, and then I'm just going to put that toward the back. And then I take my next strand and I'm just going to push it apart and do the same thing. This is kind of messy. You could use a spoon if you want it to be a little less messy. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Just kind of evenly spread. And then I'm going over the top and up. So pushing over and then on top to kind of seal it and over and then on top pushing the dough over it and then on top to hold it all together and then just a pinch at the end just to hold the end then i give that a little bit of a roll and i go to my next one actually this strand is a little bit thinner so i think i'm going to leave that one 
for my um, for the one that doesn't have anything in it. So I will put that here just next to the others so it's about the same length. Okay, and then I'm gonna use one last bit of the cinnamon sugar to finish it up. And you could be creative with the fillings. So like I said, my family is more sweet than salty. Um, so that's why we would go sweet, but some of the savory ones sounded really great also. All right, so one last time, just sort of pushing the filling in and pulling the top piece over it. And when I first did this, I didn't think it would stay so easily. Um, or that there'd be enough dough to to create the channel inside and, and roll it over and keep everything together, but there really is plenty of dough to do that. Okay, so now it's time to braid it. Mm -hmm. And this is the same way I would braid um, my regular challah, because I usually do the four-strand challah. So you can do three strands. If you look online, you could do six strands, five strands, there are lots of different um, strand options. So, but we seem to, I like the four, looks nice. <laughs> so I'm actually gonna start to, um, to do this in the middle, because when I found that I started just on one end, um, one end always looked ugly. <laughs> so to try to make it so that it looks a little bit more uniform, I'm going to start toward the middle. And so what you want to do is take the first strand and go over, under, and over, and kind of push them together so that you have that pattern. And I have to say the pattern literally every time or I can't do it. So it goes over, under, and over. And again, over, under, and over. Over, under, and over. And then you'll get to a point where you can see that it's really not gonna, it's not gonna hold together anymore. So I just did one more over, under, over, and then I pinch it and fold the bottom underneath so that it, oops, and just checking to make sure that, um, my braids are still holding together so that none of the filling is showing. So I have one here that is trying very desperately to open up. Okay, now I'm gonna come around on this side to get this side braided. So I'm going over, under, and over. And I'm gonna go again over, under, and over. And over, under, and over. I think I can get one more, sort of, over, under, sort of over. And I'm going to pinch it and tuck it under. Okay, and actually on this side, I'm going to take a little piece off. And that's... That's the whole thing to the, making this filled challah. Um, then this will need to rise for an hour. And then I'm just gonna shift it over here to, okay. And I wanna put another piece of parchment over it just so it doesn't stick to the paper towel. And then I'm just going to cover it and set it aside. Okay, so if um, if an hour had passed and we were going to bake it, the last thing that we would do is just take an egg yolk and a little bit of water, mix it together, and then just brush it onto the challah. So if you have a pastry brush, yay. 
um, fun. If you don't have a pastry brush, there we go. If, we, if you don't have a pastry brush, don't worry about it. Um, you can always just use a paper towel um, and sort of use that to paint it on, no big deal, or, or a regular towel, either way is okay. Um, and then you're gonna put it in the oven at 325 for about 35 minutes. And because it's stuffed, I, the first time I did it, I thought, well, since it's stuffed, it might need more time. Um, but I found that it was overdone. So I leave it for the 35 minutes, but I do check it at 35 minutes. And if it's not really browned then, um, or like have that golden color, then I would put it in for another five minutes probably, and then it would be done. So the last thing about making challah is that the actual challah itself traditionally is not the big loaf. The actual challah is a little piece that you take off of the loaf. And this is symbolic of an offering that was given back in ancient temple days. Because back in the ancient temple, a lot of sacrifices were brought. And by and large, most of those sacrifices, just a little piece of the sacrifice was taken and brought to the fire to create the pleasing odor for God. But the majority of the sacrifices were actually set aside to help to feed the Levites. Because if people didn't bring them food, they had no way of being able to, uh, to have food for themselves because all of their work was done in the temple. So they had no land and no fields, um, just their, their sacred work for God. So the people provided for them. So the challah would be the little piece that went into the fire and then the rest of the bread would go uh, to feed the, the high priests and the priests and their families. So there is a blessing that gets said uh, over the little piece of challah. And for some people, as they are uh, braiding the challah, they think about people who are in need of uh, prayers for healing. Um, you really could do it for prayers for anything. Um, but that it helps with intentionality when you're working that dough um, to sort of focus your attention. Um, or to just think about it when you pull off that little piece at the end, um, you know, to sort of focus again with intentionality uh, to think about the week that has passed and um, maybe the, the struggles that we faced during the week because a lot of us uh, as it, I saw a thing on Facebook, it said, please check with your friends who are extroverts. They are not okay. Um, and I know that for my extroverted friends, uh, this is definitely a struggle. Or my extroverted husband, um, who earlier this week, he agreed to let his friend and their daughter come over to see my oldest son, because my oldest son and this girl are best friends. And But they had to social distance six feet apart from the car. And... Um, and it was great. My son was so happy and his, our friend's daughter was so happy. And when it was all over and they left, my husband said, I think I needed that more than Sam needed that. And I didn't even know that I needed it. So to be able to have that connection um, with people and find ways to do that at a time when we're not supposed to be near each other, it's, it's really challenging. So um, for those who are struggling with just being inside and far away from people, um, we pray for their, really their spiritual and their mental health and well-being, um, and just for the front work, the frontline workers, uh, anybody who works in a hospital um, or works in transportation or any of the things that are really keeping our world moving at this time. Um, I would even say for some of the leaders uh, of our people. I know that um, Cuomo is doing an amazing job. I like to watch his press conferences and Murphy also um, in a different way from Cuomo, but also doing a great job of just staying on top of the situation and I think leading our state in a really good way. And I love that he starts his press conferences by talking about people who um, have died from COVID-19 and really um, humanizing what's happening. Um, I think he just does a, it's a, he does it beautifully. It's very gentle and um, really bringing attention in, you know, if it doesn't affect our family, sometimes it's hard to know the impact that it's really having. But when we can see real names and real faces and hear stories about who these people are, 
um, it definitely hits home uh, or feels a lot closer to home. So, so here, those are my prayers for this week on this little piece of challah, this little piece that when I finish with it, I'm going to put it on the tray and it'll get kind of burned up and then we can toss it once it's burned because it's served its purpose. And there's actually a blessing that we can say, which is, Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kedeshanu B'mitzvotav B'tzibanu L'hafrish Chala, which means, blessed are you, Adonai, our God, who has commanded us to set aside a portion of Chala. And then I just take it and I put it on the tray. I won't egg wash it or anything because it's going to get a little well toasted there since it's small. Um, but that's that's its purpose. It, it will have served its purpose. And that is making stuffed kala. So I hope everybody gives it a shot. As long as the as the um, the strands of the braids stay together fairly well. Um, I don't think you can go wrong with this. And to experiment and have fun with what you put in it, if not now, then when we are no longer sheltering in place and it's easier to get supplies, or maybe because we are sheltering in place, uh, now is the time to be creative and find things in your pantry that maybe normally you would not have put in challah or thought to put in bread, but uh, since you've got it, now is the time to maybe try it out and see how it goes. Wow. Um, but the, the base of the challah, that dough will always be delicious. And so whatever you put in it, um, I don't think you can go wrong. Thank you, Rabbi. It was great. I'll let you know how mine turns out. Yes. And if you bake the challah and you take a picture, um, I will. that would be great. If you Once you've sliced it and you can see the inside, if you take a picture okay. of that and send it to me, that would be awesome. I love to see... Um, everybody's baked delicious things and, uh, and to see how they've turned out. And Jerry's, your, your stuff always turns out good and pretty. <laughs> so, well, well, fingers crossed. So, all right. Thank you for this. Bye. I'll see you soon. Okay. And thanks, thank Jerry. You. Bye. You're welcome. Take care. Okay. So just uh, later this evening at 530, we have our welcome Shabbat uh, together apart and um, just an opportunity to Take a few deep breaths. Welcome in the peace and the calm of Shabbat. Um, we do some secular song singing and some Shabbat song singing. And um, it's just, it's a half an hour and just sort of a nice way to help us to break away from the rest of the week and begin to mark the time that is Shabbat, right. which I'm finding especially important right now because uh, one day seems to blend into the next. And um, it's very hard to know, <laughs> know what day it is. But by starting Shabbat in this way, uh, it helps me to know that like, okay, the week has formally ended and now it's time for Shabbat and to take a, a rest and a break. Um, everyone in my house gets to sleep in on Saturday. Uh, not so much on Sunday because my son has school on Sunday because he's on the Israeli schedule um, and they go to school on Sundays. So uh, Shabbat really is a nice, break for the whole family. So um, check our website. We'll have other things coming up. And uh, I hope everybody's kala tastes delicious and you have a wonderful week. You too. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you for connecting in this special way. Miss yeah. you. Thank you all. Thanks, Michelle. Yeah. All right. Hope to see you soon. Bye. Right. Take care. Thanks. Bye. Hi, Judy. <laughs> did you come in late or I just didn't see that you had come in? I did, did come you... in late. I had a meeting. Oh, okay. That's fine. I just wanted to make sure because I, I seem to have it set up right now that I have to accept the participants. Oh, yeah. And, on, the, um, on the face, on the, yeah, it didn't let me in, but then I went through Facebook, I think. One of oh, them. No, I, I saw that you would come in and then oh, I yes, left yes. in. Oh, that's okay, why I wanted okay. to make sure that you hadn't been waiting there for like, from since 11 and I missed it. <laughs> okay, yeah, no, I was toggling back and forth because I know I knew that um, Aunt Joy was gonna be on. She texted me, um, uh, okay. she asked me how to get on. Um, Great, yay. Yeah, so I was like, I'll, I'll meet you there. Um, 
I didn't, I'm sorry, I didn't get the measurement on the oil for the, I want to do the Cinnabon. So I actually, if you go to the Macomb and Jay website, there are huh? a whole bunch of different, um, I'll give it to you, but there are okay. a whole bunch of different suggestions and okay. measurements for how much to put in. But this was a third of a cup of, of, um, oh, that much. Okay. Yeah. A third of a cup. It says canola oil, but I only had vegetable oil. So yeah, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, and I did go online to make sure that they were interchangeable. But really, you could use any oil that you have in the house. Okay. Yeah, I and couldn't. I couldn't get for the last three weeks. As, as soon as you posted, um, and I realized I was out of yeast, I started putting it on my delivery order. But all the supermarkets around here were out of it. So last night, I I went and bartered with a friend. <laughs> I left um I left a treat in her mailbox, and she left me yeast in a plastic baggie. Yeah, so, it's very. Uh, I, I don't know why there's such a run on yeast, but it is it is almost impossible. And I I had stockpiled it a long time ago. I don't um I'm a chronic over purchaser. And so because I do the challah baking, um I had been doing it periodically for the community in person. People were coming to my house. So I just had a lot of it. Um much more of that than I had of the uh of, of the bread flour. So yeah. Yeah, so that I just, I seem to, I seem to keep a lot of it in the house. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I guess, is everybody making their own bread? I That's guess. what, yeah, because I actually sent a little note to like the ShopRite, you know, help people or whatever. And I was like, do you know when you're going to get yeast back in on, in any stores near me? Um, and they said that it seems everyone's baking at home and that's, that's why huh. they're low on it. So yeah, but my friend, um. She is not Jewish, but she had bought a giant one for Easter baking. Ah. And so she, um, yeah, she gave me more than what I need, but it'll be perfect. Great. Yeah. And I actually put more uh, flour on the order that's coming tomorrow. We'll see if I get it. It's kind of like a chopped episode. You just make do with what you get in the bag. Yes. Yep. So yeah. I actually, I found bread flour yesterday. Um, we have a Kings near us that is not as frequented as other stores are every time I'm in there, it's pretty empty and it's pretty well stocked. So, um, so I end up finding what I need They're, they're they don't have good bagged vegetables, but they have, right. you gotta, yeah, they have bread flour. Um, so that was good. Um, yeah. So, yeah. but, um, I'll be interested to see, um, Jerry, who was also on, she just used regular flour. Uh -huh. So, interested to see how hers comes out um with a it'll just be a dough with less gluten in it so the first one that we made together yeah, that, was, that was with bread, bread bread flour also but jerry who was on today she didn't have bread flour so she was just using regular flour right but the first one i didn't have bread flour i used whole oh. wheat and it was oh. amazing it was really good great yeah okay that's good to know yeah it was really good my kids would be like, oh, that's whole wheat. No. <laughs> I just was I just told anyone like, oh yeah, it's golden brown from the oh. <laughs> yeah, no, my kids would like sniff that out. They're so uh, I'm like, it tastes the same. <laughs> yeah. It it's actually yeah, it gave it a really, really good flavor. Yeah. I think they ate it in like two days. <laughs> my family eats it fast. Yes. That's why last time I think I made one that was ready to go and I ended up with three of them. Um, and it's like too much challah to have in the house and we just, everybody keeps coming back to eat it. So like two is enough and, um, <laughs> and that'll, that'll be good for this week. Yeah. So, it's nice yeah. to share with people though, too. I was thinking like putting some and you know, wrapping some and doing some drop-offs to yep. people that can't get out. Yep. And I, I don't know if you saw in my, that was, I'm going to try a pizza filled savory one. Ooh. That sounds good. Yeah, that's what I have. I have some um, Weight Watchers mozzarella cheese and some really good sauce. So we'll see how yeah. that goes. That sounds really good. Yeah. What kind was Jerry going to do? Did she say? No. <laughs> I'll be curious to see what everybody posts. Yeah. Yeah. Send me, definitely send me pictures. I love oh, them. you know I will. I always tag you and yes. <laughs> the whole rest of the world's jealous of whatever I make. <laughs> oh, I have to tell you too. Um, you know, um, Eileen. Carol's daughter yeah. and she's in California and she has an eight and a five-year-old. And after we made matzah together um, with you, I did a Zoom matzah making with them wow. and they loved it. They loved it. 
Oh, I'm sure. Those yeah. are great ages to be making matzah also. Oh my God. Yeah. They, they even actually, I said, here's where you can get creative. You can put different, you know, things on top. And um, the five-year-old went and got some marshmallows and chocolate chips and made a s'mores matzah. Oh, that's so funny. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And my daughter decided that she's never eating boxed matzah again, as long as that's she- That's what I said. It. Yep. That this is it for her. And so that's- She's also a very picky eater and she's decided she doesn't eat chicken, but that's like the only thing we eat in our house. So for the week of Passover, she just actually by day two, she's like, you're going to need to make more because I finished it. I'm like, that was a, that was a lot of matzah. She's like, it's my sustenance. You'll have to make more. So addictive. Like yeah. You can just sit there and hummus, <laughs> you know, that's whatever. A little bit of butter, some cream cheese, peanut butter. So yeah. it kept her happy. So as long as she's happy and busy, everything's good in the world. <laughs> so. And it's not, that's not, it's, I feel like that it's probably better for you. I don't know. Like, cause I don't know what they add into the boxed ones, more salt, or I don't even know, preservative type things, but yeah. Yeah. Cause it, it stays good for a really long time. So it's got to have a lot of other stuff in there. Yeah. I even put on one, I did the olive oil and some minced garlic. And it was like really good, like Passover garlic bread. Yeah. Delicious. That sounds great. Yeah. Yay. Good to be creative. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm not so creative. Um, <laughs> Whatever you have in the house. I tell other people to be creative. I am not so creative. And actually, when, I was my, when I was at my student pulpit, every time I would like make a demo of something, I would put these little flowers on it because like that's what I can draw. And I was there for three years. And after two and a half years, one of the kids was like, oh, I just got it. I was like, God, what? She's like, well, you put the flowers on everything. So you're just making a set, right? So everything matches. And I was like, yeah, that's exactly what I was doing. <laughs> but I would always say like, please don't make my flowers. Like, please make what you want to make and have it be your own. And they all did. So I, at least I felt like I could inspire their creativity where mine was limited. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, the fact that you even say that, you you know, you kind of just like give people permission. Yes. You know, that it's not like matzah can only be this way or hala can only be this way. Like the fact that you encourage people to, you know, expand on it. It's like, yep. okay, great. We have permission to not have it be this really ritualistic, but more like whatever it is to us. Yeah. Well, that's nice. my whole thing is how do you make, how do you make everything about Judaism your own? So it feels authentic um, and good at the same time. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Good. Well, Aunt Joy just pinged me that you should start a show, have your own show. <laughs> I think she's an easy audience. <laughs> <laughs> She'll have all the, uh, all the young ladies in Naples watching before you know it. Well, she's a pretty great baker also. They do amazing cookies in that family. So that is why I'm excited to see what she makes. She wrote, I have, oh, she wrote, I have a three package of yeast. There is a shortage. Yeah, join the club. Yep. <laughs> but at least she's got the three pack. That was good. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. All right. Well, have a great week. Thank you. Regards to your family. Thank you. And to yours. Stay safe. Okay, bye. Bye.